War Diary Day 547 of Russia's war against Ukraine. Independence Day yesterday to celebrate it, the Ukrainians have lined Kroshatik, their Kiev's equivalent of Oxford Street, with a ton of broken Russian ironmongery. It's very cool. Um, also yesterday, there was one air raid. No rockets landed on Kiev at all or across the rest of the country. So it looks as though the, the terror campaign by the Russians, which um, was very hot, hot, for example, just a couple of months ago in May, is is not working anything like as well as it used to do, in particular against the capital, Kiev, the outlying towns like Chernihiv the other day. Uh, closer to the Russian border, they're much more vulnerable. The good news, of course, is Prigozhin being killed. But if you look at it, you can also see that his, his, his top commander, Utkin, and his head of security were also killed in that, in that plane crash. I absolutely believe that Putin is responsible. If you doubt me, read my book, Killer in the Kremlin, which sets out the evidence that Vladimir Putin is a serial killer. Um, if you doubt the barbarity of Russia's war, look out for the film we made, Kaylin Robertson and I and Paul Conroy and Serena Zabriskie made. And this film is called, it's now called Under Deadly Skies, Ukraine's Eastern Front. And it's now available on Apple. I'll um, copy across a link to that at the bottom of this. The big picture in the war, I think, is that Ukraine is doing better than a lot of people in the West um, have been giving it credit for. I think that, um, I don't doubt that the artillery war is going Ukraine's way. And I also think that there is now a big push towards Tokmak, and after that there is Militopol, and after that the Ukrainians have severed the land bridge to Crimea. And that, if Russia loses Crimea, is big potatoes. Vladimir Putin, do fuck off.